Welcome to your latest Nottingham Forest news. Coming up on today's episode, Eddie and Ketty are linked with Nottingham Forest. Montiel set on a return to the city ground. Suspensions and satisfactions, the latest from the club. And we'll talk you through the highlights of the presser with Nuno. All this and plenty more coming up today on your latest Forest news. Let's get into it. Good morning, good evening or good night. Hope you guys are doing well and welcome to your latest Forest news and transfer news. As always, if you're enjoying the content, please don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe if you are new and let's just jump straight into this and talk about Enketia. Now, this link is coming from Sky Sports, apparently, and a few other sources. I really hope it's like April Fool's or something like that. Eddie Enketia. The Arsenal, I'd call him reject, but I guess we can't say things like that in this freaking snowflakey environment. So we'll call him the Arsenal reserve player, the backup to Gabriel Jesus, who's always injured, yet he's still back up to him even when Jesus is injured. And Kai Havertz, who isn't even a striker. Anyway, he's worth 30 million euros. He's played 119 games for Arsenal, 116, sorry, and scored a whopping 19 goals. Okay, in his defense, a lot of those appearances are off the bench, but still, man, I mean, come on. You're playing in a team that has 60, 70% possession. You'd expect a better return than that. You really would. He's 25 years old. And he just hasn't broken through into the Arsenal ranks. And you can't give him the excuse that there's a Haaland in front of him. Or there's a Mo Salah in front of him or, or something like that. No, he has an injured Gabriel Jesus in front of him who he can't get past, as I've just said. So for me, that's a massive, massive red flag, alarm bells and everything else. And I was worried about this yesterday and I couldn't bring myself to say it on stream. There was no links yesterday, but logically I was thinking, OK, Bournemouth have just taken Evan Nielsen and they were previously linked to Enketia. And Forrest and Bournemouth's list, if you saw what me and John were talking about, I'll leave the preview on the end screen. It was, it's been very similar. So doing the maths yesterday, I was like, man, now that they've got him, does this mean Forrest are going to link themselves to the other list on Bournemouth because they must obviously share lists between them? And lo and behold, 24 hours later, here we are, lists exchanged. And we're getting, we're getting Bournemouth sloppy seconds. Let's be real here. Bournemouth sloppy seconds. The other clubs that are interested in him are Marseille, who are crap. You have Crystal Palace interested in him. And those are the main ones. There's been like some loose rumors that Leicester were interested at the start of the window. And for me, it's a massive no. Look, nothing against the guy, but like I'd be saying to him, Eddie, what have you done for me lately, man, if I was an Arsenal fan? And his answer would be nothing. Let me know if you know what quote that's from. And I, I just, Arsenal would be so excited to sell him. Now, the good news, if you're on my side of this argument, is that apparently there are rumors coming out that say that Eddie is going nowhere. He'll probably be on like a hundred grand as well, which is ridiculous, man. But he must have the best job in the world. Now, the other side of this argument, let me give it so I'm, uh, no one can accuse me of not being fair and balanced. People will say, if they're for this Enketia deal, that he hasn't been given his chance at Arsenal. He needs to go to a smaller club to lead the line, be a bigger fish in a smaller pond, all that usual crap that you hear. What we heard with Jesse Lingard, remember how that turned out? And I don't really buy that argument. In fact, I can't come up with another argument to say that he would be good. He's terrible in front of goal. And he's had one mini purple patch, it's more like a pink patch rather than a purple patch about two years ago where he scored a goal. So for me, it's a no. But what do you guys think? Would you take him or not? Or am I just being my usual whiny self? Let me know in the comments down below. All right, let's move on and talk about a name we should all be familiar with. And that's Montiel, the World Cup winning penalty taker. 
pretty much all he's been famous for in the last few years. Apparently, he's linked back with Forrest. Now, this is coming from a source with a million followers on Twitter, someone called Gaston Edel. No idea who he is. Okay. And he's doing the rounds around the social media. Now, in his tweet, he says Forrest are considering going back in for Montiel. Considering being the key word. I I like Montiel. Okay. I thought he was okay last season. He just didn't get a run of sustained games. He for me, I'd put him in that Sangare bracket where if he was played regularly, had an opportunity, I think he would have probably comfortably taken that right back position. However, I'm not for it because of his age. He's 29. Okay, I know he's not past it and what have you. We could probably get him for a cut price deal. But I'll be honest with you, I don't believe these transfer rumors because if Forrest really wanted him, we could have bought him with the option we had. But we screwed Sevilla out of it anyway because we underplayed him so that we didn't trigger that clause in the contract. So I don't see how Nuno's gone from um, not wanting to play him at all so we don't have to buy him to now suddenly a change of heart and wanting to buy him. And the only reason that can be behind that would have been PSR and trying to get it on the books this year rather than last year. But to be honest, I don't think Montiel would want to come back. I don't think he was treated that great at Forest under Cooper or under Nuno last year. And I think he'll either stay at Seville or go elsewhere. And more importantly, I think we got enough cover at right back. We got Williams, we got um, Eric De Silva, and we got Einar who can play there. Obviously, Nuno wants a left back more so than a right back. So I'm not giving this story any credit. I ain't saying it ain't true. Just logically, it doesn't make sense to me. Do you guys agree or not? This video is quite depressing, man. Let me give you some little positive news just so you have it. I don't want to talk about Sosa, but I'll say 10 seconds on him. Did Nussingham did his medical. Should be announced shortly. Okay, there. Positive, positive, positive. All right, let's bring you up to speed with some football politics that's been going on between Forrest and the PGLOL and Howard Red Webb. And Stuart Twatwell, I mean Outwell, going on. So let me cast your mind back. I don't want to, but let, let's all do it for a second. More depression in this video. What the fuck? Anyway, Everton versus Forest. We all remember what happened there with Stuart Twatwell. Three penalty, clear decisions were not given or referred to. Back to the ref, etc. etc. Forest put out the infamous tweet. Now, Nuno's been fined for it as well as Nico Williams. And I'm going to say something about that in a second, but let me give you the details of that fine. Nuno's been fined 40k on that, and he's been given a one match ban suspended until 31st of May 2026. So, what does that mean? That means if he does it again before that 31st of May deadline, he will automatically receive a ban. And Nico Williams has been fined £24,000 as well. Because they've been found in disrepute of the game and all that bollocks. Which shows you, again, this is like a zip it up society, man. You can't speak your mind. What is the point in managers and players being interviewed post-game if they're only allowed to say what the media and the PGLOL and the FA allow them to say? This is football. This is about passion, raw emotion, everything else like that. And that's what I want to hear from managers and players. We are the consumers as fans. Why don't they ask us what we want to hear rather than freaking shutting people down on the people that we want to hear? I don't know. Maybe some people like it. I can't see many that would. But so this has happened. So that's why in the title we've said suspensions and satisfaction because Forest have been satisfied by something. And that something is about the declaration of allegiance, not to the country, but to your club. And there has been an update in the policy. And once I explain this, I need you guys in the comments to explain to me what the hell it means. Because it says here, when referees put in allegiance forms, they're asked to declare any specific interest in advance of the season. And as the season goes on, should any of those change? That's going to be made public so you can see what the protocol looks like. This is Howard Redweb speaking, by the way what those declarations of interest are. We review each one of those and then make a judgment. If we feel there's a conflict, 
Um, if you've got any personal connections to people who work in the club as well, we'll make an evaluation of all of those. If there's a conflict of interest, that will be recorded and taken into account for the appointments. I don't get it. I don't get it. It's got to be one of the dumbest lines I've ever heard in football talk ever. That bit where he says, and as the season goes on, should any of those things change? Basically, we'll make it public. Because the whole thing was that the Premier League made, or the PGLOL, made it sound like they were going to publicise who every referee supports. Now, what this is saying, or what Howard Red Webb is saying, is that if it changes, name me one person you've ever met in your life who mid-season went from supporting, I don't know, Brentford to Sheffield Wednesday. I, I've, I've never seen it. I've never I've been seen people get depressed over their teams over the course of the season. But I haven't, I've never met someone who's changed football clubs that they support. So is Howard Red Webb saying here that if Stuart Twatwell goes from being a Luton fan to a Leicester fan, we'll publicly make this information known to everyone. But until then, we won't publicly admit that Stuart Twatwell is a Luton fan. This is absolute bollocks. Sorry to swear, but it is. Is bollocks swearing? I don't know. I just said it again. So that's... It's, it's just politics talk in spin in everything else. Now, Forrest have come out with a statement. And they're kind of taking credit for all of this. Fair enough. I mean, they did put the tweet out. And they've said, in April 2024, Forrest raised concerns in regards... Uh, Forrest raised concerns regarding PGLOL. Okay, they didn't write that. I'm saying that. Appointments policy, including a lack of transparency surrounding that policy. We believe that our comments and concerns have been, uh, have been listened to. And we were pleased that this policy is now accessible to the public ensuring transparency for all clubs and supporters. We are confident that these steps will greatly benefit all clubs and the wider game. So it sounds like Forrest have got the wrong end of the stick on this one. And they think that Stuart Twatwell is going to stand on a podium and publicly declare his allegiance to EasyJet FC. But that's not going to happen according to Howard Webb. This is a complete mess. And Forrest are now saying they're happy with it. Written statement on the website. I don't get it. I don't. Maybe I've misread it. Maybe I've misread the temperature of the room. But it doesn't sound like anything's going to change unless someone starts supporting another club. So Forrest are happy with it. I'm absolutely confused by it. What do you guys think about it? Let me know in the comments down below. All right, and the final topic for today is Nuno's presser. And believe me, this won't even be as long as his presser because nothing much was said, to be honest. All we found out is there are no new injuries. Nuno was asked about the style and the formation that he's looking to get this season, and he kind of dodged that question. Then there was the usual fluffy questions about what the expectations are, and, and you know, the usual manager talk came out. I'll be honest with you guys, because I always am. I'm kind of finding Nuno's presses a bit boring. I want to know how you guys feel about them. I thought in the first two to three weeks when he first came in, breath of fresh air, really informative, really interesting to hear. And ever since then, the length of the press is getting shorter and shorter and shorter. There's loads of manager presses that are like 20 to 30 minutes long and there's loads of interesting points you can take from. Nuno's was like five and a half minutes. And that's quite long for him right now. So he's in and out, man. Maybe he, you know, the nicotine levels are getting low in him or something. And it's not his fault about it. I think it's still the journalists that are asking the questions. There was one or two decent questions. I would have liked to have known that answer about, you know, the style of Forest this year and the tactics. But obviously he's not going to share that. But the journalists need to step up with the type of questions they're asking him. Get some fan questions in there. We know the questions we want the answers to. Not the usual questions you're gonna ask that guarantee. I could I could tell I could tell Nuno, you know what, mate? Take a five minute break. I'll do the presser for you because I know exactly what you're gonna say, because it's gonna be the same as the manager up the road from you and the one up the road from him. And I could just fill in for you because it's gonna be the same managerial spiel coming out because the questions aren't great. But anyway, that aside, um, no new injuries, nothing major to worry about. 
we pretty much have a fully fit squad, which is very rare um, lately for us. But it's not rare for Nuno. Remember what we told you about Nuno at Wolves? Very rarely did they have a sustained long-term injury because of his medical staff. So good news. And ladies and gents, that's probably it until the watch along now, unless something crazy breaks. Okay, I just got scared. That's it. We're here. It's time. There's, there's no more talk, literally. I know I've been saying that all week and then been babbling on. But tomorrow's the game. How are you feeling about it? We will, of course, see you for that watch along. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to Forest Fan TV if you are new. Sorry, it's been a bit of a downer episode. Maybe it hasn't. I don't know, but just don't want to get here. We'll see you on the watch along. Come on, you Reds.